That way it actually starts back from the beginning. I was doing some cracking before, and it remembers where you are in the, in the file so you can resume later. I don't want to resume. I just want it to start cracking. So um, let me go ahead and hit... Oh, these are all different ways you can... Remember he's talking about permutations? I've also seen it referred to as hybrid attack. I think that's other terminology for it. You can take the passwords in the uh, dictionary and try them in multiple different ways. Like password as is, reverse the password, the password twice, so on and so forth. Uh, let's go ahead and hit start and have it start trying to crack those passwords. As you can see, it found the that NTLM hash corresponds to the password bad pass. And it's continuing on through the list. Had I wanted to actually put that one to crack inside of Hashcat, I could have. I'll show you how we would have done that. I'm going to stop this. I got the bad pass, and that was just a simple crack from uh, there. When I did this dump, it actually dumped it out into an LST file. So let's see if I can find that LST file. Let me see. I'm going to sort by, uh, eh, let me get this sort. Yes, okay. Sort by uh, date modified. That helps me find the one I just dumped. All right, this NTLM one, I'm going to open that bad boy up. And here's the fa fa format it's in. This is not a format that's going to be easily accepted by our uh, friend Hashcat. I want to find the hash I want, though, to crack. And that particular one, <coughs> strange enough, did it remove it once it saw I had cracked it? Mm. It looks like it may have gone in and uh, removed it once it knew it cracked it. So let me go back in here. Let's just do a straight dump. Again, I'm just going to empty all these out again. I guess once it figured it cracked it once, it didn't need to crack it again. I'm just going to import them from the local system. And there we go. Now, hopefully, if I reopen that file, we'll actually have it stored in there. That's not the one I meant to open. But regardless, there we go. There's that hash. Now this is just one hash. If I want to put that in some format that, um, uh, let's say, Hashcat can understand, I'll just create a text file with just that. New text file hashes and uh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Wait for programs to respond. The demo gods. Yeah, the demo gods are not always necessarily smiling. <laughs> Just die. Also not happy. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe VMware is having a problem with coming out of sleep mode because I, I put this thing in and out of sleep mode a couple times, and I think that may be causing part of my uh, problems. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start that back up. Huh? Well, it looks like. Well, what do you know? It was all okay. That's uh, actually. I wonder if it's still in my pasteboard. Ah, uh, not that lucky. All uh, right, let's go and find that cane folder again. C program files. And sorry, I'm kind of rushing it a little bit, but I know where the time is drawing short. I'm gonna open that back up. You can do Notepad. I've got Notepad plus plus of this. There's my hash in question. I can put that on line by itself, or I can copy one after another after another, line after line, into the exact same thing. I'm just going to save it right there. It could be the same hat, different hashes over and over again. 
If there's no salt, that's all you have to do. If there's a salt for the hash, essentially, by default, you use a, a colon and a whatever. Whatever the salt is. But I don't have salts for these. These are unsalted. By its very nature, LM hashes and NTLM hashes are not salted. I'm going to use the Hashcat GUI and I'm going to point it towards my hash file, which I put on my desktop. And I just called it hashes. I'm going to point it towards a word list, and I can do a bunch of different word lists. And they showed you much more detail, and go back and watch the video to uh, get more details on um, all the different things you can do with Hashcat. I'm going to just go with a simple thing. I'm going to point it towards uh, program files. I already have Kane's dictionary around, so I'm going to use Kane's word list and use it. At that point, I have to choose what hash to crack. They were choosing mostly uh, MD5. Uh, this happens to be uh, NTLM hash that we have in here. So we're going to choose NTLM and go to click I am the hash killer. <laughs> I guess they change that from time to time. I could choose an output file, but I'm just going to have it output it straight to the screen. And it ran so fast that the hounds didn't catch him all the way down. Never mind, sorry. Old uh, Giant Fortune song. Uh, I get a little loopy as class moves on. But right here is, you can see it found that hash represents bad pass. If I wanted to, I'd put it output it straight to a file instead, which would probably would have, would have been a better idea. But that's a real quick example of using Hashcat to crack Salmon's system. Uh, a hash is out of the SAM. It's Windows uh, passwords. Let me see. Now, we'll talk a little bit about memory uh, time, uh, memory trade offs. Now, as people are doing things, especially LM hashes, where you only have seven possible characters that are split into two chunks, uh, rainbow tables are awesome. Basically, the pre computation hack, hash, uh, pre computation attacks, from the standpoint is all the possible password hashes were given set of strings are all pre-computed and put in a database. And essentially, as soon as you get a hash, you just go out to the database and look it up. Now, with salts, this becomes a lot more difficult because one person's version of a password is not the same as someone else's version of the password. Uh, for every bit of a salting value, basically you double the space that someone would have to take up with a rainbow table to be able to crack that, which is kind of the idea, I guess, behind using Hashcat instead, you don't have to use that storage. But I mean, there are time trade-offs um, that can be made. And if you have the LM hashes, definitely look into using rainbow tables because there should be rainbow tables out there that you could reasonably get on a decently huge hard drive and crack any LM hash you want almost instantaneously. All right, Sam cracking prevention. I'm going to talk a little bit about preventing this from happening. First of all, choose stronger local passwords. You know, use uh, different ASCII, uh, use them longer, use them more uh, alphanumeric and odd characters. And also, if you really want to get uh, strange, who has ever used an alt numpad? Use alt numpad, you can type in any ASCII character you want. Like I use, uh, I think, alt 234 puts an omega symbol in. You just bring sure the numlock's on. I can't remember if it's the right or left alt key you have to hold down. I think it might be the left. And then type in the ASCII code equivalent. And there you go. This works in Windows, not necessarily other operating systems. And you're able to um, type in any old ASCII character. Uh, turn off LM hashes. You can do that via the information in this particular uh, Microsoft Knowledge Base article. You can do it via GPO. Really, unless you have a bunch of uh, down-level clients like um, Windows 98 or something, or Windows Millennium still in your network, you really probably don't need LM hashes. So just dump them. They're off by default in Vista and thereafter. If you use passwords longer than 14 characters, let's say you work someplace that won't turn off LM hashes. If you choose a password longer than 14 characters, it won't store a LM hash because it can't split it into two 7-byte chunks because it's too big for that. So, you know, choose a password that's longer than 14 characters. Uh, you can change local passwords frequently and rely on domain passwords if possible. That way if someone cracks a local password, it's not directly like they, can, they uh, cracked a domain password that they can use all over the place. However, as I was talking about before, once you get 
a password on one local box, you can install things to grab passwords that might be network centric instead. And obviously, don't use the same uh, local admin password on public boxes as you would staff boxes. For instance, let's say you work at a, at a school. You probably don't want to use the same local admin passwords for the students as you would for the teachers. Because you're just asking for students to grab passwords out and uh, attack the teachers' machines, change their grades, whatnot. All right, there's also some fascist methods that may not be practical in most cases. You can use the BIOS to disable booting, and depending on when and where you do this, that's probably not a bad idea. If you keep them from being able to boot from a hard drive, if nothing else, if you keep them from being able to boot from like removable media, if nothing else, you slow them down. It generally means they're going to have to open up the box, reset the BIOS password, or pull the hard drive out and do something with it. Also, full hard drive encryption would also take care of that. You can also configure syskey to uh, run off a disk at boot time. Though, like I said, there's still syskey when you use the tool, it's still oriented towards the idea of using a floppy disk, which isn't practical modern days. All right, Linux and Unix passwords. This is a little bit different, and I'm not sure I have everything I need to actually try to crack these. But I'll at least show you where the hashes are. Essentially, I showed you Hashcat. You simply choose a different kind of hash you wish to crack. That's all there is to it, really. Um, let me, uh, actually, I'm going to continue that slideshow, but I need to find, ah, oh, there we go. I'm going to use uh, Backtracks 1. Go back to the slideshow where that's loading. All right. What passwords look in the heart of the users? The shadow knows. It used to be uh, at old uh, Unix boxes, the password was pretty much world, well, the password hash was world readable to everybody inside of slash Etsy slash password, uh, passwd. Uh, since then, they've moved into shadow, which is not world readable, but if you're root, you can still read it. Uh, a password hash, and I've color coded this one, on, uh, let's say, a modern Linux box looks something like this. And I've broken in what the parts are. This right here, this dollar sign and some number, represents the kind of hash it is. If you see a dollar sign 1, it's probably an MD5 hash. If you see a 2, blowfish. 5 is SHA-256, and a 6 is SHA-512. And when you go into a um, hash cat or something like that, you'll have to choose the proper hashing type. Um, the green part here is the salt. The salt adds randomness. So let's say the password is bad pass. If the salt differs, if that salt differs, then the uh, resulting hash is going to differ, which is why salted passwords, it becomes rather impractical to use rainbow table style attacks. Yes? Now is that the actual salt or is that a hash of the salt? That is a salt. The hash is this part. The, yeah, the salt there is the actual, you would type in for salt, GF, capital G, F, K. Yes. Okay. If I was to represent this as something for a hash cat, what it would be is it would be all this stuff in yellow, colon, this salt. Okay. Yes? Um, isn't there something where you use aliases or you do, um, instead of, like, not the NC password or it's a shadow, but you can there's some stuff you can do with PAMD, and I'm not as familiar with it as I'd like to be, where you can point it to be someplace else. I mean, the password could actually, you can make a, a Linux box a, a, a attached to some other type of authentication system. This is just the default authentication system that usually when you install something like Ubuntu, it's going to have. I mean, you can make it authenticate against like a, a Kubo system or a an NT domain if you really want to. And then a lot of stuff wouldn't necessarily apply. Like if you did a nail like into the entry password, you see like a what the last and where the password build is or you change that to Yeah. The this file I'm actually showing you. Actually I I, 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 I will get to that in just no, no, that's that's fine. By the way, I've got some good helpful links here. A Wikipedia that explains it the system inside of Pro also has some information. And that's why I found this information about which particular symbol in the front tells you what kind of hashing algorithm. A lot of old style uh, Unix passwords are just uh, DES uh, encrypted. Or I should say, I think they're used to encrypt a new, a known DES value. I don't remember exactly the algorithm they use. If you